Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an offset animation. In this case, we're going to be offsetting both time and position to create a lower third animation. All right, let's get started. I'll begin by making a new composition, and I'll call it lower third, and all this is good, so I'll hit OK. Then I'll grab my type tool, and I'll type out some text for this. Then I'll duplicate it and make some secondary text. Then I'll go up to Layer, New, Shape Layer, and I'll add a rectangle and a fill. And I'll go ahead and change that fill to be a light blue. And now I'm going to twirl down the rectangle path and sort of size it out so that it fits my text pretty well. Then I'll parent my text to the text box and I'll rename this shape layer to be text box one. And then I'll move it into place. So I'm just using my title safe grid help me place this box that looks good I'm gonna move my playhead over to frame 20 and I'll set a keyframe for the position of this text box then I'll move over to frame 40 and I'll also set another keyframe so it's just gonna be sitting here during that time I'll move my playhead back over to zero and I'll drag it off screen then I'll move my playhead over to 70 and I get that. I'm going to drag it over to the left side of the screen. So it'll animate up and then it'll animate off to the left. Just like that. Then I'll highlight all my keyframes and I'll use our script under the influence to ease this. So that's what we got right now. I'm also going to have this animate a little bit further off screen so that when we have offset layers, they'll also go off screen. Now I'll go up to layer, new, null object, and I'll rename this null object controller. Then I'll go up to effect, expression controls, slider control. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this slider control to be delay. Then I'll go down to my text box and I'll duplicate it. And I'll pull up that position and just delete those keyframes. Then I'll drag it below my other text box and I'll change the fill to be a different color. With the position still pulled up, I'll option click the stopwatch and I'll add the following expression. We'll include this expression in the description below so you can copy and paste into After Effects. So let's break this down quickly. We're defining three variables, M, D, and P m is equal to the layer's index minus 4. Why 4? Because the first layer we're applying this to is text box 2, and it should be layer number 5. 5 minus 4 equals 1, and so therefore m equals 1. We'll come back to this. d is simply pointing to the delay slider control we made on the null object. p looks at the position of text box 1, but there's a little more to it with the value at time added we're subtracting the current time by d times m. So we're multiplying the delay slider and the layer index minus four together. And whatever that is equal to is how much we're offsetting the layer in time. So if we added another text box and dragged it to the bottom so that it's layer number six, then its m value will be two instead of one because six minus four equals two. And that's how we achieve these evenly offset layers. Now let's add some delay to this. So I'll go over to the controller and I'll change the delay value to say 0.1. A little goes a long way with this. Now when I scrub through my animation, you'll see that my boxes are offset. To test the expression, let's go ahead and duplicate text box two and make a third one. And we'll change the fill again so that we can see the difference. You'll see that it's already offset the proper amount. You can continue this process, creating as many duplicates as you like. 
just remember that it's looking at layer index. So if you put another layer above the text boxes, you'll have to compensate in the expression. One thing I'm not crazy about right now that I'm seeing is that the boxes kind of separate there. And I don't really like that. So I'm just going to adjust my incoming influence over here to be maybe 70. And I'll adjust that outgoing to be 72. And hopefully that'll fix that problem. Yeah, there you go. So at this point, we could call it done, but we're going to take it another step further by offsetting the physical position of these boxes as well. So I'll go over to my controller and I'll duplicate the delay slider twice. And I'll rename these duplicates X offset and Y offset. I'll go ahead and change their values to be 20 so that when we make this new expression, you'll go ahead and see the change. Then let's replace the expression in the text boxes with the following. Again, we'll include this expression in the video description below so you can easily copy and paste. Time for another breakdown. This one is similar in a lot of ways, but we've added two new variables, OX and OY. OX and OY are pointing to the new sliders we added to the controller null. Then we're multiplying those values with M, which we talked about in the last expression. We take the result of those two being multiplied together and then add it to the position to get our offset. Your text boxes should be evenly offset in time and position now. Again, you can duplicate the text boxes as many times as you need to, and it all should work just fine. You can even keyframe the offset sliders to get some cool and unique animations.